What is up guys, welcome back to another GeekerWatt video and today I'm taking you over the best $400 gaming PC build for 2018. This build for this ridiculously low price tag is seriously, seriously impressive as you'll see from the benchmarks uh, on your screen now actually taken from this built up system. For me this build sits at the sweet spot of budget 1080p gaming giving you 45 to 60 frames per second and even some of the latest AAA titles on low to medium settings. Head down to the older games CSGO, World of Warcraft, League of Legends, Minecraft, uh, those kind of titles you look in medium and high settings in excess of 60 frames per second. But now though as always let's jump into the parts I chose and why kicking it off with the CPU. You. The AMD Ryzen 3 2200G is AMD's brand new budget APU offering. I actually featured its bigger brother the equally impressive 2400G in a build recently which you can find in the card section now. A couple of other things to note about this chip, it is available on Amazon Prime which means you can get a super fast delivery and I'll link all the parts for different regions and retailers in the description below. It includes a superb stock cooler which will actually give you some overclocking leverage if you so desire and is far quieter than any of the included uh, Intel stock coolers. Not only that, it's got a fast 3.5 uh, with faster 3.7 gigahertz uh, base and turbo frequency. These aren't the fastest of any CPU around, but they are gonna be good enough that you see some decent performance in older titles, such as CSGO, which like that fast single threaded performance. Despite that, it is a quad-core chip, so unlike many of the Intel Core i3s, it does have the full four-core count, which helps to maintain compatibility with the latest AAA titles, which may require the full four cores. It's also worth noting uh, that this CPU APU design uh, has a TDP of just 65 watts, which is very, very power efficient and also means uh, that this thing isn't going to output too much heat, which is always a win-win. Traditionally, APUs haven't always boasted that great a performance figures, even if they were really cheap and inexpensive in terms of gaming. These APUs are definitely an exception. They aren't going to perform as well as a 1050, 1050 Ti or RX 460, 560 from AMD, and it is all about getting expectations in check, but for a 1080p build, these units are more than capable. The integrated Vega graphics have also shown to be so impressive that Intel have actually uh, licensed them from AMD for use in some of their processors, um, which is completely unheard of, bearing in mind that Intel is of course AMD's direct competitor. For the motherboard in this build, I went for one of my favourites, it's Asus's Prime B350M-E. Now, I've used this in so many builds, uh, actually own two of these units and have been very impressed by both of them. Uh, now, key things to note with this motherboard, first of all, is the B350 chipset. That's the second highest chipset that AMD motherboards offer. And what it means is that you actually get support for overclocking, you get more PCIe lanes, you also get USB 3.1 on the rear I.O., as well as an M.2 slot and support for dual channel memory which are all very key important features uh, for a motherboard for Ryzen. It also looks really quite nice with the black and red color scheme and the micro ATX form factor strikes a happy medium between full size feature rich ATX boards and much smaller compact mini ITX boards meaning you aren't paying a premium for that really tiny crammed in motherboard nor are you paying a premium for a much larger product. Overall, this has everything we could need on it and also comes in at a very competitive price point considering it's a B350 motherboard. For the memory in this build, I opted for 8GB, of course there's Vengeance LPX in a 2x4GB configuration. Having dual channel memory, so two sticks of RAM, actually allows more bandwidth uh, to your Ryzen APU and will afford you some better performance. I will actually be taking a deeper dive in an upcoming video uh, looking at single versus dual channel memory as well to see just how worth it it really is. Now, there is one slight drawback of getting two DIMMs of RAM in the short term. If you want to upgrade and add more capacity in, this motherboard does only have two RAM DIMM slots on board. Now what that means is that you would actually have to end up getting a whole new kit and perhaps sell this one on second hand on eBay for example. This isn't too much of a big deal and some people may choose to go for two 8GB sticks now, 16 gigs of RAM, but given memory pricing and how much I think you really need for this build, I think this does a great job as is. For the storage in this build I opted for a simple 1TB Seagate Barracuda hard drive. 
It comes in at the 7200 RPM speed, which is as fast as your mainstream consumer hard drives get, and the 3.5 inch form factor is pretty normal for hard drives nowadays and will fit in our case absolutely no problem. I own loads of these Seagate drives ranging all the way up to 4TB drives and have never to date had one fail on me. That being said, failure rates amongst hard drives are higher than SSDs and SSD flash based storage mediums are going to be quicker. However, they are going to cost you so much more money and give you far less capacity, which in a build of this budget, really this to me is definitely the best option. You can always add in an SSD later and keep this hard drive for mass storage purposes, but for the short term, this is definitely the best option. The penultimate part in this build is the case. I went for Thermaltake's brand new Versa H17, and I even reviewed that case in the card section now. I've been very, very impressed by it, and it just offers so, so much considering it comes in well under the $40 price tag. The full spanning uh, side panel window with metal PSU shroud, exceptional build quality front panel USB 3, really good well thought out cable routing options, and plenty of space for your build while staying in a compact and sleek form factor make this honestly one of my favourite budget cases ever. I actually featured the Cooler Master Masterbox Lite 3.1 in another build as well, which could be a good option if you want to spend a bit more cash, but for this build, this is definitely my preferred choice. For the power supply here for the final part in today's build, it's another thermal take affair. It wasn't planned, I promise. It's their TR2 500 watt. It actually comes in to be one of the cheapest, most reliable 500 watt power supplies on the market and gives us plenty of headroom. This build consumes... Are you ready for it? A whopping 150 watts. So you've just got so much leverage here for upgrades, so much headroom on here as well. It's 80 plus certified, which means it's guaranteed to run above 80% efficiency at all times. And that's tested by an external uh, verifier, which means it's going to save you money at the wall uh, because it's actually wasting less of the energy that it takes as heat or noise, for example. But that about wraps it up for today's video. If you did enjoy it, make sure to smash that like button. Do subscribe for more content from me. On your screen now, you can check out my reviews playlist as well as another video that YouTube's algorithm thinks you might quite like. Let me know what you think of the build in the comment section below. Hit me up on Twitter, it's at GeekAWatt. And as always, we'll see you in the next GeekAWatt video.